Okay. So in this presentation, we'll be talking about building brand relevance in your local community. Building brand relevance in your local community. Okay, so when we talk about brand relevance, what exactly does that mean? So when we talk about brand relevance, building brand relevance, what we're talking about is your brand's ability to make a much deeper connection with the community that you're serving by tailoring your your marketing message, your offers, and your overall experience to fit the culture, the lifestyle, and the, the unique needs of that community that you're trying to reach. So this presentation is perfect for if you're a local business, like if you're, let's say you're a local doctor, or maybe you are a local CPA that you're trying to get. So any business who is looking to build credibility in the community that it serves, you may even be looking to expand into other communities so if you're looking to expand into a new community, it's really important to have a deeper understanding of that community and really build rapport in that community. So that's what we'll be talking about today is how can you really build that re relevance in your local community over time? Okay, so okay, so in this presentation, we'll be talking about why local relevance is so important. So why is it so important to have a brand that's locally relevant in the community? I'll also be sharing with you some examples of successful brands that have been built on local relevance that you can learn from and adapt to your strategies. And then I'll be sharing with you eight effective strategies to build local relevance in your in the community. And lastly, we'll be talking about tracking. So how can we track the success of our efforts? How can you track the level of local relevance that your business has in the in the area? So I've been really looking forward to this presentation. I hope you have been as well. We're going to dive right in and then we'll go into the Q&A. Okay. Okay, so localism is on the rise. Localism is on the rise. So when we talk about localism being on the rise, what we're talking about is the increase in demand for local, for locally sourced businesses, for locally focused businesses. So over the years, we've seen an increase in demand for businesses that are locally based and for products that are locally sourced because, and this is driven by so many, so many different factors. So one of the factors that's driving the rise of localism is the pan, was the pandemic. So during the pandemic, a lot of people started to question their shopping habits. Another thing that's driving the, the rise of localism is the shift towards sustainability. So as more and more consumers started to demand sustainable products and brands, they also started to them they also started looking for locally sourced products. So they're looking for products that are sourced locally, and they're looking for ways to really give back to the community. So increasingly, customers they're starting to look for brands that really that really fit and align with the culture and lifestyle of their community. They want to buy from brands that speak their language. They want to buy from brands that really understand their community and their lifestyle. So localism is on the rise. So this is a really important component when really building that emotional connection with, with customers because you, we want them to feel like we understand their community at a much deeper level. We want them to perceive us as a brand that deeply cares about the community and we want them to see us as a brand that the community really needs. Okay, so according to a recent statistic, 90% of consumers actively seek out local businesses and go out of their way to shop locally. So this is according to a report by Podium from 2022. So 90% of consumers are actively seeking local businesses and you're going out of your way to shop locally. So this statistic really emphasizes the need for more locally relevant brands that are able to build rapport in the community. According to another statistic, 74% of consumers prefer to browse and buy locally instead of online. So this is a kind of counterintuitive to what we usually expect. Usually we would expect that customers would prefer to shop online with brands from other countries, but customers, they, they're actually, a lot of people are actually looking for local brands they're looking for local products that they can support because they're looking for more meaning in their everyday lives. So by have by having a brand that has locally local relevance, that could really give you a huge advantage and allow you to connect with these emerging consumers who are looking for 
locally focused brands that fit their culture, their 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 lifestyle, their community. And also, according to another statistic, the estimated combined annual revenue of local retailers have grown by 50 percent between 2017 and 2023. So this is according to the U.S. Small Business Association and National Federation report. So the, the estimated combined annual revenue of local retailers has grown by approximately 50% between 2017 and 2023. So even if you're not a retailer, by looking at the statistic, there's clearly an increase in demand for local. There's clearly an increased need to shop local. So this really emphasizes why local, how localism is on the rise and how customers, they're increasingly looking for brands that have a deeper impact in the community. Okay. So how can we really build that trust with the community? How can we position our brands as something that com the community really needs and something that's deeply embedded into the fabric of the community? Okay, here are some examples of successful brands that have been built on local relevance. So by looking at these brands that have been built on local relevance, we can now learn from these strategies and apply these strategies to our businesses as well. So one example of a brand that's been built on local relevance is Starbucks, Starbucks. So you're definitely familiar with Starbucks because you see them in almost any, every community. So one of the big ideas behind Starbucks was that the founder traveled to Italy, to a community in Italy, and then he saw how the local coffee shop really helps to bring the community together. He saw the atmosphere of community and belonging that it created when when he visited Italy, and he wanted to bring that same experience to the U.S. as well. So that's one of the big ideas behind it, because back then, a lot of people saw coffee as something that you get for, for pennies on a dollar, for something really cheap that you get from a retailer. But but and, but to Howard Schultz, the founder of Starbucks, he saw it as something that could really help to bring the community together, and he wanted to create a create an experience around coffee. So that's one of the big ideas behind Starbucks is that focus on being locally relevant. Another thing about Starbucks is that they're really known to partner with local producers and they're really known to source local ingredients. Another thing about Starbucks is that they tend to engage in community outreach. So they, they do lots of community outreach. They like to support local events, local programs. So all these things really help them to build rapport in the local community. So one of one of the one of the biggest barriers to Starbucks's expansion was that when they expanded into other communities, they received a lot of pushback because a lot of people were frustrated because they felt like Starbucks was was ripping at the culture of their community because they saw Starbucks as a foreign entity that was ripping away the culture of the local community. So that's how a lot of people saw Starbucks. So Starbucks, they had to work extra hard to really build trust with these communities that were, they were expanding into. So they had to be, be willing to adapt their experiences, their stores to fit these different local communities and build rapport with these communities over time. So when we look at the story of Starbucks, it really emphasizes why it's so crucial to be able to really build that rapport with the communities that we're trying to reach. Another example of a brand that's built on local relevance was Shake Shack. Shake Shack. So Shake Shack actually started as a small hot dog cart in Madison Square Park, New York. And then over time, it was able to grow into a international restaurant chain. So Shake Shack is one of the classic examples of the American dream. It started small and then over time they expanded. So one thing that was key to Shake Shack's success was their focus on being locally relevant. So they start by building buzz in the local community, and then over time, they were able to expand globally. So one thing about Shake Shack is their ability to adapt their stores to, the, to reflect the local culture and aesthetics of the different communities. Another thing about Shake Shack is their ability to source ingredients from local farms, local suppliers. They also place a strong emphasis on community involvement. So they try to get more involved in the communities through partnerships, through events. So all these things will really help Shake Shack to establish a much stronger sense of relevance in these various communities around the world. 
Okay, so another example of a brand built on local relevance was Lululemon. So to those who don't know what Lululemon is, Lululemon is an athleisure apparel brand. The one thing that was key to Lululemon's success was their willingness to partner with local fitness leaders. So they would partner with local fitness leaders in these communities. It could be a fitness trainer or a yoga instructor. So by partnering with these people, it really helps them to build a mutually beneficial relationship with these people in which in which they would help these people to get more customers. And at the same time, these people would help them to sell their products. So it was kind of like a win-win situation. And then let me see. So one thing about Lululemon was that so through this strategy, they were able to save marketing costs because a lot of other companies, they were focused on hiring big celebrities. But Lululemon, they didn't care about big celebrities. They were just trying to network with local fitness leaders in these communities. So by reaching out to these local fitness leaders, this allowed them to save money on marketing and focus on partnerships instead. And, and over time, they were able to build their brand and really build rapport in these communities so that more and more people learn about what they're selling. So when we look at all these brands that have been built on local relevance, this could really help to inform our strategy and so that we can learn from these brands as well. Okay. So before developing a strategy to build local relevance, we have to first immerse ourselves in the communities that we're trying to serve. We have to immerse ourselves in the communities that we're trying to reach. We have to gain a much deeper understanding of these communities because we're not just here to take from the community. We're here to give back to the community. And we want our brand to be seen as something that's essential to the community. We want to nurture these communities. So first we have to gain a much deeper understanding of them. So one, one key question we need to ask is, what is the heritage of the community that we're trying to get into? So how would we describe the heritage of this community? What is the story of this community? So every community has a story, has a heritage. So how can we align our brand with the heritage of this community? Another question to answer, another thing to consider is the demographics of the community. So demographics just refers to the groups of people that are living in this community. So for example, is it a, is it a Latino community? Is it an Ethiopian community? So all these all these demographic information would give us a much clearer picture of the kinds of people that we're trying to reach so that we can adapt our messaging to fit these cultures. So another, another thing to consider is the income level. So by looking at the income level of these communities, that would give us a better idea of what to charge for our offers, you know, based on what people are most likely to afford. Okay, so when we talk about the psychographics, we're just referring to the mindsets of the community. So we're trying to gain a clearer picture of how people think in this community. So we can find the psychographics by looking online. We, we can also find the psychographic by just having a nice conversation with people. So there, there are so many different ways to, to accumulate data to really inform our strategy, but it all just starts by understanding the heritage and just having a, like a clear picture of what the culture is like in this, in this community. So one key question to ask is, so when we look at our community, what do we feel like the community is lacking? So this is a very powerful question. So when you when you look at your community, what do you feel like your community is lacking that your brand can provide? So you can find the answer to this question by just putting just by being very observant. You know, when you look around, what do you feel like it's lacking? Or you may have a conversation with people to really understand their needs. What are they, what do you feel like this community really needs? There might even be some underserved groups in this community that other brands aren't catering to. So when you look at your community, what do you feel like your community is really lacking that your brand can provide? Maybe your community is boring. Maybe, maybe it maybe it doesn't really have maybe it's not very welcoming. So there are so many possible things that your community might be lacking. Another thing to consider is the competition. So who are the other businesses in your area? who are selling what you're selling. So this will give us a much clearer picture of the current context, the landscape. So who are the other businesses in your area? So one, one benefit of being a locally relevant brand is that you don't have to compete with companies across the globe. 
So if your brand is, if you're an online business, then you're competing with almost everybody else on the internet. So you probably have hundreds or thousands of competitors, but when you're locally focused, you're only competing with like, maybe like less than 10 people. So when you look at the area, who are the other businesses in your area that are selling what you're selling? What are they doing right? And what are they doing wrong? Another another key question to ask is, what's trending on the local news? So when you look at the local news in your area, what are some of the things that people are talking about? What are some of the trending topics and how can we align our brand with these topics? Okay. Okay, so just to reiterate, so first we need to understand what's the heritage of this community? What is the what are the values of these com of these communities and how can we align our brand with the heritage and values? What do people value? We also need to look at the demographics and psychographics. So who are the people who live here and how do these people think? We're trying to gain a clear picture of who we're talking to. Another key question is the needs. So what do you feel like your community is lacking that your brand can really provide? Next is the competition. So who are the other similar businesses in your area who are selling what you're selling? And lastly is the local news. So what are some of the trending topics that align with your brand? So by looking at these basic questions, this will give us a, this will give us a, a much richer palette of information that can really inform our marketing strategy. Okay. And lastly is the local influencers. So every community has local influencers, local experts that you can reach out to, that you can leverage. So who are some of the local influencers in your area that you can reach out to down the road? So this is all very crucial information. So now that we've acquired this information, the next step is to strategize. So here are eight effective strategies that you can start to implement to build local relevance in the community that you're trying to reach. So here are eight effective strategies to build relevance. Okay, so the first strategy is joining local organizations and groups. By joining local organizations and groups. So different communities, they all have their local organizations, they all have their local groups. And these organizations and groups would give you access to even more resources that, could, that you can leverage in your business. So it could be a local chamber of commerce. So there are so many different organizations and groups that are available. So some are industry specific and then some of them are, are broad and general. So just a matter of doing some homework to figure out what are some of the local organizations in the and groups in this community. So it's not enough to just join. We have to be active members. So how can we be more active in these organizations, in these groups? How can we be more active and make and really leverage these organizations and groups? Another step you can take is by networking with these decision makers. So once you once you've joined these groups, the next step is who do you who, who do you need to get connected with? So when you reach out to these decision makers, you can now introduce yourself and give them a sense of what you're all about and what your brand is about. And you can start to build that relationship. And you would see that that would really open the door to even more opportunities for you. Okay. And lastly, is forming your own. So you could actually form your own group in your community. So you don't, so aside from joining others, you can actually form your own group. It could be a group that just meets once a week or once a month or even once a year. So by forming your own group, that could really that could be a really effective way to start to build a level of credibility and relevance in your community. Okay. Okay, another strategy is local outreach. Local outreach. So just by reaching out to these local nonprofits, local institutions, and local influencers, so that that way we can start to build a relationship with these with these organizations, these people. Okay. So when it comes to these these nonprofits, these institutions, it's really important to make sure that we're reaching out to people and and reaching out to people and organizations that align with our brand's values. So once you're clear about your brand's values, you can now start to reach out to people that align with your values. And you know, you would see that the synergy would be much better. And they're much more willing to partner with you because your brand clearly aligns with what, with what they're all about. Okay, so at this point, we're just trying to reach out to these people and we're trying to build rapport with these people. 
So one way to build rapport is by being a sponsor. So just by being a sponsor to one of these, one of these, one of these entities, whether it's a nonprofit, it could be, it could even be a local church or a local institution, a local school. So just by being a sponsor, that could really help to really boost your credibility and give you more, give your brand more relevance in the local area, give you more press by, because they would be happy to promote your brand to their audience so that more people learn more about what you're, um, what you're all about. Another way to conduct local outreach is by reaching out to schools. So it all depends on what you're selling. So let's say, for example, your brand is a sports brand. In that case, then you might reach out to schools and see how you can collaborate with them and maybe have some kind of sports program in these schools. Another way you, you can reach out to schools is by doing events in these schools. You can actually reach out to these schools that you can ask them, you know, who's in charge of events and then you can just introduce yourself and say that you would like to do some, you would like to become a speaker at that school. And that would really give you some really good press. And that would really help to enhance your brand's credibility because you're you're really making an impact. You're making an impact in schools. You're making an impact in nonprofits, in institutions. So that would really help to boost your brand's credibility and take it to the to new heights. Okay. And another strategy is local partnerships. So this kind of aligns with the last strategy of outreach. So at this point, we're thinking of ways in which we can partner with these local figures, local organizations, local institutions. So many, there are so many different ways you can partner with them. So one way you can partner with these, with these entities is by doing events. So by doing events with organizations that your customers already trust, they're, they're, they're going to feel the same way about your brand as well. And the thing about these events is that people take pictures at these events and these events get shared on social media. So this would really help to draw more attention to your brand and really enhance your credibility because you're partnering with these well-known institutions and people to do events. Another way you can partner is by doing competitions. So for example, you can partner with a local school or a local institution to do a competition in the community. So that would really help to engage the community and that would really help to draw more attention to what you're doing because a lot of these people, they're going to be taking pictures. They're going to be sharing it on social media. So which competition can you start, can you create that's related to your brand and what you're selling? Another way to partner is through programming. So you can do some kind of programs with these local organizations, local schools. Just think of which, which what kind of programs can I get involved in? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be something very complex. It could just be something simple, and this would really help to enhance your credibility and really give you some some really strong media coverage in your community. Okay, so when it comes to local partnerships, one step you can take is to research local corporations with CSR programs. So CSR stands for Corporate Social Responsibility. So corporations that have CSR programs, they're much more likely to sponsor your events they're much more likely to sponsor your competition, your program, because it's benefiting the community. So there are a lot of corporations that are looking for local events, competitions, and programs that they can sponsor to really, to really help to um to really help to engage the community and build the community. Okay, so by look by researching these local corporations, this will give you an idea of the corporations that are much more willing to partner with you and sponsor your initiatives. Another step to take is to leverage Eventbrite marketing. So Eventbrite, they have your own marketing platform. So let's say, for example, you're doing an event. So if so, let's and let's say you're starting from scratch. So if no one knows your brand and you're starting from scratch, then it's going to be very hard to get people to sign up for your event. But if you're partnering with others, then it's, it becomes much easier to get people to sign up because you're leveraging the network of these organizations and these institutions. They're going to give you access to their members. And then when you use events, Bryce, that would really help you to reach more people at a cost effective, in a cost effective way. So we event bright is a very targeted. So you're able to target people based on interest, based on location, and you're, you're able to draw more, more and more people to these local events that you're doing. Okay. So that they can also learn more about your brand. Another way to approach it is by partnering with indirect competitors. 
So your indirect competitors, that just refers to the companies that you're not selling what you're selling, but you're speaking to the same target audience. So by partnering with these indirect competitors, that would really allow you to, uh, this would really allow you to, to reach new people, to reach new audiences, because you're partnering with people who are trying to reach similar people as well. So let's say, for example, you are, let's say, for example, you're a local restaurant. In that case, then you might partner with like a, a local nutritionist. So that could be a good example of a partnership because you're not selling the same thing, but you're, you're speaking to the same people who are looking for healthy foods. So when you look at your brand, you can now think of who are some of the indirect competitors who, in my space who I can partner with. And, you know, how can we do, maybe have an event or some kind of program to really attract more people in a mutually beneficial partnership. Okay. And lastly, the Meetup app. So Meetup is similar to Eventsbrite, but it's more locally focused. So with the Meetup app, you're able to have these small events. It could be in person or it could be virtual. And it would give you access to more and more people who would sign up. So with Meetup, you can reach more people in your local area to sign up for your event. And that could be an effective marketing tool if you're trying to market your local events in the community. Okay, so on the next strategy is by leveraging local search, by leveraging local search. So when we talk about local search, we're talking about having your brand listed on Google Business and these other local directories. So not just Google Business, but also on Bing on Apple Maps, on Hot Frog. So there's so many different local directories that your brand should be listed on. So by listing your brand in these directories, that would really help to enhance your local search visibility because when people search for your when people search for what you're selling, we want your company to show up on the first page. So it's really crucial to make sure that your brand is being listed in all these well-known search directories. It's also really crucial to make sure that your description is consistent across these platforms that your address is consistent across these platforms. That would really help to enhance your social research, your local search presence. So when it comes to local search, it's really crucial to make sure that your profile is completed. So you have, you have a full description of what your company does and you have a full description of your services. You have a full description of your different offers, your, your, hours, of, your hours of operation. So all these things will help to enhance your local search presence. Another way to leverage local search is by learning from competitor reviews. So by looking at the reviews of your competitors, this will give you a clearer picture of what your competitors are doing wrong and what customers are really looking for that your brand can offer. You can look at where your competitors are weak. So reviews can be a really powerful way to do market research. And it, it can also be very a very cost-effective way because you can have this information for free and it can be very eye-opening to really see what your what your customers are looking for and what, what other people are doing wrong. So by learning from these reviews, you can have a clear picture of what your customers need and what the other competitors aren't really providing. Okay, so when it comes to the local search, it's also important to make sure that your profile is being updated regularly. So every now and then, you might update, update your profile by posting on the profile, or maybe you might add a new offer or a new picture. All these things will help to keep your, your listing fresh in the database. Okay. And lastly, to build reviews over time. So when it comes to your local search presence, the more reviews you have, you better, the better. So it's always important to reach out to these happy customers and think of, and you can ask them to leave a review to let, let people know what their experience was like. And if, you, if your review is less than four stars, then you might want to reach out to these people to find out what what happened and how you can make it a five star. Okay, so by building reviews over time, that would really help to enhance your local search presence. Okay, so the next strategy is local media. Local media. So every community has local media outlets that you that you should definitely be reaching out to. So by local re media, I'm referring to the local journalists, the local podcasters, and other media outlets. Okay, so when you look at your brand, do you does your brand have a newsworthy story to tell? Do you have a story to tell that's newsworthy? 
So if you have a newsworthy story, then you should absolutely reach out to these journalists. So it's much harder to get on the local news, but you can definitely get on local podcasters in the meantime. So if you're looking to get on podcasts, then it's just a matter of researching and putting together a list of all the different podcasters in your area, and then just reaching out to these people via email. And then it's just a matter of making sure that your email is effectively tailored. So in your email, you would talk about the kinds of topics that you would like to discuss and how it aligns with your show and how your audience would really benefit. And then you can also let them know that you're able to tailor your topic if needed, because some podcasters, they may be looking for certain topics. You could also discuss it further with them in case they're looking to for you to, 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 to speak on a certain topic on your show. So it's much easier to get on podcasts and radio. But when it comes to journalists, it becomes much more complex because you would need to have a newsworthy story to tell, something that's really engaging because these journalists, they're looking for a, a story that would really help to engage your audience. And they want to be sure that your story is really going to drive that engagement. So when it comes to these journalists, before reaching out to journalists, it's really important to make sure that you have a press release and a media kit. So your press release just gives them an overview of the story that you're telling and how it aligns with the trends and what's trending in that community. And then the media kit just gives them an overview of who you are and the kinds of topics that you that you talk about. It could even it could even cover your social media presence, like what's your audience size. All these things will help to increase your chances of selecting you for an interview because these journalists you're always looking for local subject matter experts so by re by doing some research you can actually reach out to these local journalists and you can introduce yourself you can send your press release your media kits and just talk about you know how your story is relevant to the community and how people would really benefit so when it comes to local media it's really crucial to make sure that your message and story is somehow tied to local events and trends so when you're reaching out to these journalists, it's really important to think about how can I tie my story to what's trending in the local news? Where does my story fit in with the topics that are trending right now? That would really help to increase your chances of getting an interview in the local news. Okay, another strategy is direct mail, direct mail. So a lot of people think that direct mail is dead or only for real estate agents, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. So direct mail is just intended for any business that's looking to target a specific demographic, a specific area, a specific community. So you could actually use direct mail to reach these customers. So one way to approach direct mail is by leveraging USPS marketing mail. So with USPS marketing mail, you're able to send a personalized direct email campaign to a mailing list that you purchase in a specific location. Another way you could approach it is by using EDDM. So with EDDM, you can target specific zip codes. So one thing about EDDM is that it's, it's much more cost effective because you don't have to purchase a mailing list. You can just target a specific zip code and send them your postcards in the mail. Okay. So when it comes to direct mail, we have to consider how the online and the offline channels intersect. So we have to consider how, how our direct mail campaigns intersects with our digital campaigns. So by combining them both, that would really help to make it much more effective. So while you're seeing your, your postcards, you're also seeing your Facebook ads online. So that would really help to draw more people in by combining these campaigns and also to leverage seasonal trends. So every community has seasonal trends. They all have days of significance so for example, it might be so for example, it might be New Year or Christmas or springtime or summertime. These are all seasonal trends that you can leverage to you know when you're selling these sending these direct mail campaigns. You can also also aim for things that are specific to that community because different communities have specific holidays that are very significant to them. So by leveraging these trends and these holidays, these seasons, that would really help to make your advertisements much more relevant. But it's really important to really keep it concise and clear with these direct mail campaigns because we're, because we're trying to really stand out. We're trying to really draw them in so that they want to learn more. Okay. And another strategy is with transit advertising. 
transit advertising. So transit advertising refers to, so have you ever been to a, to a train or a bus or an airport? And then you see these advertisements everywhere. You see advertisements on the back of the bus, inside the bus. You see advertisements inside the train. You see advertisements on the walls, in the airports, in the stations. These are all examples of transit advertising. These are also examples of out-of-home advertising. So transit advertising, it's a form of out-of-home advertising. These are just the things that you see around you. So this allows you to really reach people, reach, com reach these people in the community. And this will really allow you to really engage with the community. Okay, so let's say, for example, you're considering transit advertising. The first step you would take is to identify, like, who is the local transit agency? Let's say you're trying to place an ad on, you know, on a bus or on a train or in the station or in a bus stop. You would need to identify the local transit agency in your area. And when you visit their website, you would see that they have a section for advertising. Okay, so sometimes they handle the advertising by themselves. And then sometimes they have in they have a separate ad agency that handles all their advertising. So usually they have someone in charge, but if not, then they would refer you to the right person to speak to. So when you reach out to these agents, you would need to request a media kit. So the media kits would just give you a better idea of the, the options that are available. They would also send you their pricing list so that you have a better idea of how much these things cost. So a lot of people think that transit advertising costs millions of dollars, but that's not really the case. You can have a transit advertising campaign for as low as six hundred dollars a month. So it's really it's really around the same cost as like a fit of like a basic Facebook ad. So it's not as, as expensive as you think. It also depends on your physical location and where you're advertising and the size of your advertisements. Okay. So one thing about transit advertising is that it has to be it has to be simple but memorable. It has to be simple but memorable. So there, there are two forms of transit advertisements. The first are the things that customers see on the go. So that's the, that's the advertisement that shows up on the moving bus, on the moving train. So those kinds of advertisements usually give you a few a few seconds or a few minutes to get known. Another kind of transit advertising is what they see when you're waiting. So the, so the advertisements that they see when you're waiting on the bus or when you're waiting inside the train or inside the bus, that would give you a lot more time to really engage with these people. So regardless of the scenario, the advertisement, it needs to be, it needs to be simple and memorable. It also it needs to be thought-provoking and eye-catching. Okay. So when it comes to transit advertising, it's also important to aim for high traffic areas so if it's an area that no one visits, then you're not going to get much results. So we have to aim for high traffic areas like downtown or like during busy hours. These are all great times to launch your ad campaign. Okay. Okay, so transit advertising is rarely used by smaller businesses, but smaller businesses can absolutely leverage transit advertising to really build more relevance in the community. Okay, let me see. And lastly is digital ads. So digital ads, they're a form of transit advertisements, but the difference is that digital ads are in motion. So have you ever been on like a public area and then you saw like an advertisement, maybe like a nice video or an animation? That's an example of a digital ad because it's it's in motion. It's more engaging, more eye-catching. So... <clears throat> So you can either aim for something static that goes on the wall, or you can aim for a digital ad that's moving. That, and you can show your, your advertisement to, to passers who, you know, who pass by. So transit advertisement, it can be a really effective way to really reach new audiences and engage the community. Okay, so another strategy is by posting locally relevant content. So at, so at this point, we're thinking of how can we engage with these people on social media as well, or online, on our website. So by posting locally relevant content, that'll really help to improve your rankings in the area. So one way to approach it is by, con so if you're on Facebook, then you'll probably know that they have local groups that are focused on specific communities. 
So by joining these groups and by adding value to these groups, that would really help you to build rapport in these communities. So try to go, try to search for your community's name on Facebook and look at what groups they have available they can participate in. Okay, so when it comes to locally relevant content, another way to approach it is by promoting relevant local events and stories on social media with local hashtags. So let's say something interesting happens in your local community. Maybe there's an event or something that something that happened. It could be good or bad. So by sharing by sharing content, by promoting this this content, that could really help to impre inc increase your local relevance because you're using these local hashtags for different cities, different areas. Another way to build local relevance through content is by creating blog posts. So you can actually create blog posts around local events, local news, local activities. So that really helps to establish your brand as a thought leader in that community. And it could also really help to attract more journalists by creating these blog posts around these local events and activities. Okay, another way to approach it is by creating social media content around the topics in your community that are trending. So if there's certain topics in your community that are trending, you could create... <clears throat> You can create content around these, these topics, but it's really crucial to make sure that your content is relatable. So you have to be relatable to that community, their culture, their, you know, their lifestyle of that community. Okay. Okay, so now that we've looked at the different strategies for building local relevance, how can we measure our success? So how can we measure the level of local relevance that our business has? So one way is with traffic. So with Google Analytics, you can actually see how much traffic you're getting. And you can actually see where the traffic is coming from. What cities is the traffic coming from? What country is the traffic coming from? This will be a really effective way to see how much traffic you're getting in the community by looking at your Google Analytics. Another way to measure local relevance is with net promoter scores. So let's say, for example, you had a happy customer you could actually do a you could actually have the customer fill a survey to determine how likely are they to refer your brand to others. So net promoter scores, it could be a really powerful way to measure how the level of trust that customers have, you know, in that area based on how likely they are to refer you to others. Another metric another way to measure brand relevance is with search. So when last did you look at your analytics? And how often do people search for your brand online? How often do people search for your name online? That will give you a better idea of the level of relevance that your brand has. So when you look at your search presence, so one way to tell is by looking at Google Search Console. So with Google Search Console, you could see how often people search for your brand online, how often they search for your name online. That will give you a clear picture of how relevant your, your brand is in that community, in that area. Another way to measure relevance is with engagement. So how engaged are people? How often do people engage with your brand? So for example, if you were to have an event, how many people would sign up? How many people would show up? How many people are engaging with your content on social media? That will really help to give you an idea of how much engagement you're getting in the community. And lastly is sales and retention. So by actually looking at the sales figures, so when you look at your sales, you can look at how, where's, where are most of your clients coming from or your customers coming from? Where are most of your sales coming from? And what is your retention looking like? How many of them return? Give, this will give you a much clearer picture of the level of relevance that your brand has. So by looking at the traffic, the NPS, by looking at your search presence, the level of engagement you're getting, the level of sales and retention you're getting, all these different areas will give you a much clearer picture of the level of brand relevance that your business has in the in the community. Okay. Okay, so here's some final tips. So when it comes to brand relevance, it's really crucial to give the community something to talk about. So the way people think is people get bored very easily. So they need something that they can talk about with your friends, with your colleagues. And this could be a really good source of referrals. So what can you give to the community that they can talk about? And then you would see that that would really help to draw more attention to your brand. So what can your brand offer that people can really talk about? It could be an event that was very interesting. It could be a performance, a competition. It could just be a topic that's very thought-provoking. 
So what can so what can we give the community that they can talk about to really enhance engagement? Another thing to consider is aligning our our brand's values and stories with the community. So it's really important to make sure that our brand is aligned with the values and stories of the communities that we try to serve. So when we look at our community and the things that people value, we can now align our brand's messages, our brand's offers with what people truly value and what the community is truly about. And also, it's really crucial to be able to adapt. So by adapting and responding to local trends, local events, that would really help to make our brand much more relevant. And then in terms of tactics, you may also consider using a dedicated phone number or email. So by having a dedicated phone number or email, you can now track the leads that are being generated from these marketing channels. You can see how many people actually contacted you or emailed you after seeing your advertisements. Okay. And lastly is Facebook pixels. So have you ever been on the website and then after you left, you kept seeing your content everywhere? You kept seeing your advertising everywhere? That's because that website uses Facebook pixels. So by utilizing Facebook pixels, you can now track people in your community who have visited your website so that they can see so that they continue seeing your content, your advertising, and then you can continue to add value to them. Okay. So yeah. So I really hope you found this presentation very informative. Let's dive into the QA. So if you have any questions, feel free to put your hands up in the chat and I'll be happy to help you. Okay, let me see. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to put your hands up in the chat. Any questions? It could also be a comment. Does anyone have any question or comments? Okay, I see Harry Carter. Uh, yeah, I don't have any questions, but I do have a comment. I appreciate the information. Um, it gave me a chance to actually jog my mind on a lot of different um, things that I hadn't over overseen. You know, like for instance, joining um, different um, organizations as um, sponsors, things of that nature, um, or even the ad buying with um, on buses and mobile, you know, things like that. So I really appreciate the um the information. Um thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of these strategies, they can be very impactful, you know, and they don't really cost that much to do, but they can be very impactful, you know, in terms of boosting your credibility in the local area. Okay. All right, I see let me see. Okay, I see Sean Allen. Sean Allen, okay. Okay, I think I'm good now. So, my, can you hear me? Yeah. So, my question is, thank you so much for all of the information that you've shared. Very valuable um, insight and easily it could be implemented. When it comes to content creation and ads, do you think that there should be a system of of how you generate the content and when you should strategically choose to place the ads? Is there a backend algorithm that we, the business owner, do not know about that often generates a little bit more traffic? Do you have that information? Okay, so I'm trying to be clear about your question. So what, what I'm hearing is that you're asking if there, there should be a system of how content is being created and shared. Is, that is there a system for how content should be created and does one trump the other? Does content creation on certain outlets trump ads or does ads trump content creation? Okay, yeah. So, well, it all depends on, number one, the kind of business you have. I mean, the platform that you're on. And it also depends okay. on what your goals are. You know, so for example, if, you're, if your goal is community engagements to build trust, to build rapport, then you might focus more on content creation because content creation is more focused on community engagements and really building that rapport and that credibility. But if your goal is just sales, maybe you have a quick offer, 
in that case, that you might run an ad campaign, or if you're just trying to grow your following very quickly, then you might run an ad campaign that focus on your, you know, growing your following. So it all just depends on what your objective is and, you know, the platform that you're on. So for example, I find that, um, you know, organic Instagram is much more effective than organic Facebook. So something like Facebook is much more geared towards advertising, but Instagram is more geared towards organic. So it also depends on the platform that you're on. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That was Yeah. very, very, very insightful. Thank you, Eddie. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll definitely recommend both. You, it all just depends on what's feasible for you. You Perfect. know, yeah, both from a budget standpoint and also from, you know, the 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 time and resources you have available, you know, because you have to really know what you're doing, you know, if you're trying to, you know, leverage social media, you know, for, for organic, you know, organic posting, you have to really know what you're doing or, you know, hire someone that does, you know. Perfect. Thanks so much. Okay. Okay, thanks. So yeah, and does anyone else have any questions? Anyone else? Uh... Let me see, anyone else? Okay, going once. Anyone have any questions? Let me see. Uh... Going twice, anyone have any questions or comments? Okay, so since no one has any questions or comments, then I would like to ask a question. So have any of you tried any of these any of these tactics to build local relevance? So what if, would any of you like to share a, an effort that you've done to build more credibility in your local community? Would any of you like to share that other people can learn from? Anyone? Okay, Z Maker Studios. Okay. We can't hear you. So, uh, uh, getting uh, creating relationships with uh, my local libraries, uh, since I'm in the market of uh, graphic novels, uh, uh, visual uh, books, comic books, um, creating relationships with them, and uh, depending upon the work, um, establishing a, a rapport with them to either make my work available or to have workshops around it, or even to teach uh, drawing or art classes. Yeah, So uh, fantastic. that's Yeah. been uh, helpful, helpful for me. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for your input. So yeah, you know, definitely by you know by reaching out. So it's really crucial to build these relationships. You know, so it's all just based on you know your specific kind of business and what you know what you're offering. That will help to determine the right people to connect with. You know, so you can really build that relationship. And the good thing is that it's free, but it could be very beneficial. You know, when you have these relationships. Okay, I see Harry Carter. Is, is your hand up or? Harry Carter. Can you hear me now? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, well, one thing I just um, started doing, um, I found that we had some um, local uh, B2B um, networking groups in Washington State area that I didn't know about. So I just signed up for them. Um, actually, today, I haven't had a chance to... Uh, to go to one yet, but there's one I hopefully that I'll be able to uh, take advantage of. And I'm a little bit more excited about going to it now thinking, you know, because a lot of them are, are connected to the local church groups, local bank, or, you know, things of like that in the area. So now I have a different perspective on how I'm going to go deal with, you know, talking to these, you know, these groups when I get in there. Yeah, So, absolutely. uh, yeah, that's just one thing. Yeah. Absolutely. The thing about networking is that it's absolutely free, you know, but it can be very beneficial for your business, you know, and I'll take it from my own, you know, experience too. Like I've made some really great connections. So, so yeah, definitely. Okay. So let's just have one more person. Is, would anyone else like to share any efforts that they've made to build local relevance or anything that you're considering? Anyone or... Okay, so yeah. So in that case, then, you know, it's been a really great time. I hope you all got some really great nuggets from this presentation. And I hope you're able to, you'll be able to make it to our next event. So yeah, so I just want to say thank you for your time. And I really hope you all have a great rest of your week.
All right. Bye-bye. Have a great one, Sean. Okay. Um, if you would like to speak with me, feel free to stay on the line.